you trust him? Maybe he just wants to save someone in the garden, anyone. Maybe it's just luck he chose you. He says he's willing to help me without any strings attached. Shouldn't I be grateful? I know who this is now. Then why do you look so worried? I just don't believe that anyone helps anyone else for nothing. How about I test him? We can see if his promise is genuine or not. All right. I don't want to count on him in the first place. I would only be getting my hopes up. Princess Lin, you will help me, won't you? I understand your pain. I would try to help. The sky is dark with rain clouds. Only the desperate or foolish would be out today. I wonder which one of those I am. I look at the note in my hand again. Meet me at the fence, it reads. The only place in the garden I would think of to call a fence is here at the wall that separates us from the outside world. Even though this is a private garden and we aren't meant to leave, the wall isn't very high. I've never seen any guards patrolling the perimeter either. This wooden fence that marks the outer limit of the, the oblivious garden almost seems decorative. It gives the impression of an ordinary public park. But unlike a public park, no one ever seems to enter the oblivious garden. As a matter of fact, no one even lives within miles of the garden. The common folk and the nobility both avoid the region altogether. After I've been waiting for some time, I finally see a girl come down the path alone. Her long black hair dances in the wind. Princess Lin. Please excuse me, but do you know anything about this note? I show her the note I received. No, I'm sorry. I don't recognize it. Nor have I seen anyone around. The plants here are overgrown. The gardeners spend their time elsewhere. The maids don't clean here either. Everyone avoids the edge of the garden. So why is Lynn here? She seems to anticipate my question. I like this place. She grasps between she grasps my hand between her slim fingers. Your Highness? Don't resist Arel. Her hand looks soft and decorative, but I can't move a finger. She guides my hand towards the fence. Before my hand reaches the fence, it comes into contact with something solid and invisible. You feel that? That is the real wall. No one can see it and no one can get past it. No one likes to be reminded that they live in the cage, so everyone else avoids the cage at the edge of the garden. Lynn freezes, her body going rigid. <laughs> Simon, go for Lynn away from... They were, and I don't think uh, Arel is ever going to be... No, did she, he's not going to pick Finn. Trust me on this one. She's holding on to me tightly. I can't move or push her away. Her eyes have widened in fear. I look in the direction she is staring. There I see a hideous insect on the wall. So, the silent and refer reserved Lynn has fears just like any normal girl. I swipe the insect away. Be careful, Arel. As she shouts, the wall admits a noise, and the insect is devoured in blue flame. When the flame dies away, only ashes are left behind. Whoa. The wall's magic attacks whatever tries to cross the border? And if Lin was worried I would be hurt by the magic, I bet that it includes the princesses in here with me. We really are just like birds in a cage. His Majesty said something along those lines once, but he sounded proud to have a cage filled with beautiful birds. She looks me in the eyes. Do you sympathize with the birds around? Do you want to help them escape their cage? 
Birds aren't the only thing trapped in this cage. There are also insects like the one we just saw now. What do you think of me, Arel? Am I a bird or an insect? Won't you help me, Arel? Please help just me. Ah, I've just realized something. I've been working to help Finn write notes. This must have come from her. I'm terribly sorry, Lynn, but she'll probably need my help when she gets here. Perhaps I can help you another time? She looked shocked. Arel. She wasn't very good at writing when I started teaching her. I'm proud at how far this shows she has come. I loaned her a book to study a while back. She doesn't remember much of what she tries to learn. She obviously worked hard to learn even this much. You make an excellent teacher, Aurel. You didn't really listen to what I was asking you just now, did you? But you still seem to have answered the question. Finn, you can come out now. Finn, there you are. I'm so proud of you. You wrote me this note, didn't you? Why did you turn Lynn away? What? My excitement that Finn managed to write a note all by herself dies with her question. I can feel my smile freeze. What are you talking about, Finn? Why was Lynn all the way out here? I take a step forward. Don't take another step. Stay away from me. I get it now. Finn has been trying to push me away since we met. Growing up in the garden has taught her not to trust people and never show weakness by asking for help. Don't you get it, Your Excellency? I'm just an insignificant insect. You can already do whatever you want to me. You don't have to help me or have to make me like you. If you just want to be someone's knight in shining armour, why don't you pick one of the princesses? Why me? If you don't love me and you don't want to use my body, why would you go out of your way to help me? You're just a guest in the garden. You don't belong here and sooner or later you'll go. But I'm different. I'll never be allowed to leave. I knew from the start that I would never escape the garden, but one day your task will be done and you'll get to leave. Ever since that day you promised to help me, I've lived in the fear of the day you would eventually abandon me. You look at the outer limits of the garden and see a decorative fence, but I see an impassable wall and will keep me caged for the rest of my life. If there was no wall here... You don't trust me to not abandon you, so you decided to test me. You asked Lynn to try and steal my help away from you. I don't blame you for having a hard time trusting. Nothing about your life has ever taught you to put any faith in others. But Finn, what have I ever done but try to help you? What more could I have done to earn your trust? Aurel! Aurel, calm down. Please wait. What more do you want from me, Lynn? It wasn't in my power to open the gate. Her words stirred emotions that were already roiled. I didn't mean to shout at her so rudely. I don't mean to shout at you. I'm just not accustomed to feeling helpless. I should... <sighs> I should go. Lynn, please take care of Finn. Please don't. I didn't make to mean to make you leave. I know you're the only one in the garden who has ever offered to help me without expecting something in return. Whenever I stumble, I always find your hand reaching out to help me back up. But I don't know how to react to someone who doesn't expect anything in exchange. I don't really want you to love me, Arel. Don't abandon me either. You don't, don't leave me alone. No matter what, I want to leave the garden. I don't want to be left here alone. I've got it. I know how we can get out. Princess Erephus once told me that the wall will fall if the mage who built it dies. 
Finn, no. Arel, she isn't thinking straight. You have to stop her. Go! The panic in Lynn's voice fills me with a sense of foreboding. Finn, stop! Hmm. A Middleston bystander. Opening the door of the library, I come across a knife-wielding Finn pinning Erephus to the ground. Erephus' squirrel is running circles about the princess and the maid, but hasn't moved in to attack yet. Even with no one to stop her, the little maid is trembling in fear. It's all right. I can take it. She's repeating something to herself over and over, but I can't make it out clearly. I'm... I'm just a maid. Nothing more. I'm expected to obey, even when orders are unreasonable. Even if someone wants to use me as an outlet of their anger, or as a placeholder, a warm body for their fantasy. It's fine. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just forget it the next day, or the day after. I'll, I'll just like I'll forget Arel's promise. Sheen finally notices I'm here. Am I a joke to you, Your Excellency? She bursts into laughter. I still have the chance to change everything. Just one thrust. Finn, snap out of it. Don't do anything you'll regret. Erephus, stop her. I know you can. Erephus just sighs. I failed again. This is my fault. I try to manipulate you to gain my own freedom. I remember telling you that the only way to break the wall is to kill the mage who built it. But I didn't tell you that I built it. I'm sorry, Finn. Killing me won't free you. At Erephus's words, Finn's resolve evaporates. The knife falls, clattering on the ground. Its edge reflects a brittle smile and tears. Finn collapses, horrified at what she almost did. What have I done? I tried to hurt the princess. What kind of monster am I? Ah! Well past the point of tears now, Finn is screaming in sorrow and rage. 